G'day everyone and welcome to the vlog. Today I'm going to be reinstalling the camshafts back onto the engine on my E46. The camshafts have been out for a few weeks because I had an issue with the what was it? I think it was the inlet camshaft. Yeah, I had an issue with the in inlet camshaft when I was swapping over the helix which drives the Vanos off the camshaft. When I was reinstalling it, I'd over torqued it and snapped the bolt. So a lesson here from my experience to you guys is that the helix and that bolt, that's a 10 mil bolt aren't a replacement part from BMW. So the problem really wasn't getting the snapped bolt drilled out. The problem was actually finding a replacement bolt and uh, it's taken a lot of Facebook messages and phone calls and eventually I found a bloke who stripped down a couple of Vanos units out of an M54 engine and he happened to have a spare one floating around in his toolbox. So you need to be really careful with those and there's still a bit of confusion as to what the actual torque spec is. The best I've been able to find out is the torque spec is 40 newton meters plus 60 degrees and there's also mixed feelings as to whether you should use red Loctite or not. I'm not going to use a red Loctite simply because in the end of the camshaft there's an oil gallery hole and I don't want to risk gumming up that hole and not getting sufficient oil around the, the Vanos gears. So I'm going to run with 40 newton meters, see how it feels and then make a decision whether I go the extra 60 degrees or not. I've already started cleaning things up. I've got all my cam caps cleaned up. I've got all the gears cleaned up. What I'm going to do now is pull the hydraulic lifters out, get those cleaned up, soak them in a bit of oil and then a bit of assembly lube around where those hydraulic lifters drop into the lifter tray. So that's my project to start with this morning and then I'm going to get cracking on getting these camshafts back in so we're one step closer to getting this thing fired up. So I'm pulling the lifters out and the lifter tray to get those cleaned up and I just wanted to mention that with the hydraulic lifters they need to stay in their specific position. One through to I think there's 12 two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Yeah, uh, twelve on the inlet, twelve on the exhaust, and they need to stay in their right position because you'll get a certain amount of wear from the camshaft lobe on each one. So this here is the lifter tray and the lifters, and, and the lifters um, drop into these holes here. I've got one side out and I just use a little bit of tape which holds it to the lifter tray so that when you lift it up they all don't just drop out and end up in the um, top of the head. So I'll move the lifter tray over to the workbench because I'm going to get these cleaned up. I have cleaned it up before but it's then been sitting for a few months so I just want to give it another clean as part of the reassembly. The other thing I'll check is on the lifters inside there's a little uh, pin and that needs to be able to move freely so I'll just double check that they're moving freely, clean those up, I'll pull the exhaust side out, do the same with that and then I should be right to start putting the camshafts back in and getting all the timing set up. I've got the camshafts positioned into the head and Basically, it's going to be a reversal of the removal process. So this is the exhaust cam and I've got um, number one cap, number three and number five. So these th three and five I'll tighten with the socket, uh, with my ratchet. And then as I've done a quarter turn on each, I'll then just finger tighten number one to bring it down level. So the whole purpose of doing it this way is the camshafts are hollow so you don't want to crack them by putting too much load in, in one position. By doing it using 3 and 5 they're actually applying pressure onto the hydraulic lifters that if you have a look the lobes are actually resting on those and that'll sort of bring it all down and then I can put the other caps on. So once I've done that then I'll do the same on the inlet camshaft. The only difference there is with the inlet camshaft I use caps four and six and number one just hand tighten as I go down. So I'll keep going with that and we should be getting pretty close.
G'day everyone. Well, it's the next day and I need to apologize because the battery went flat in my camera yesterday. That was halfway through installing the camshafts. I've got those in and I've got everything sort of locked in, ready to install the timing gear. If you'd like to see how to remove the camshafts, then I've posted a link above and you can sort of check that out as well. The install process is pretty much just the reverse of the install uh, the removal process it's a lovely day today but those crows are doing my head in i don't know where they come from but but every year they seem to hover around our place at about yeah you know, this time of the morning anyway uh, hopefully they don't make too much noise as uh, I continue to install the timing gear and get this filmed for you. Pretty much I've got my instructions all printed out and ready to go. I've done this a few times but I really like to have the instructions because it's a really important step to get all the timing gear done just right because the last thing you want is to have the timing out. I'm gonna take my time with it and make sure I follow the torque specs and all that sort of thing and get everything sort of set up so that we're right to go. I'll just move the camera around so you can see where I'm up to. So the, what I'm looking at is on the number one lobes, just here and here, I want those sort of pointing towards each other. And then at the back, I've got the locking blocks locked in so I've used a white marker to sort of highlight the dots which come on the camshafts otherwise they're a little bit hard to see so just to be sure that they're locked in and ready to go and what I'm going to do is I've installed the helixes for the vanos onto the camshafts and they're all torqued up I end up going 40 newton meters um, and that seems pretty tight that's the primary timing chain. So my first step is to get that installed onto the cog on the, the intake camshaft. I'll start with that and then I'll get the camera set up and we'll go from there. Pretty happy with the way things are going. I had a bit of a hiccup with the primary timing chain. There just seemed to be a bit too much tension on it. So what I did is I removed the locking pin into the flywheel and rotated the crankshaft a little bit uh, left and right. And that seemed to loosen up the timing chain so that I could get the cog fitted properly onto the camshaft. And then I've reset top dead center, put the locking pin back in, and then sort of moved on from there. So I've got the primary timing chain on and that's all aligned up as per the instructions and I've got the timing chain tensioners in place and now I'm ready to start putting on the Vanos timing gear so the secondary timing chain and that sort of thing so hopefully that should all work out well get the camera set back up on the tripod and we'll keep going from there what's up everyone it's now actually Saturday I mean this really isn't a three-day job it's just that life sort of got in the way a little bit I did a bit of work on it through the week and got all the timing gear nutted down and the Vanos on. I did a rotation of the crank when I first put the timing gear in and everything lines up and it's in time and what I'm going to do is another turn of the crank because this is my last opportunity to do that before I fire it up. But I've got a rebuilt Vanos unit with upgraded parts. They don't use just rubber seals and things like that. I think they use Teflon and things like that. So it should wear a lot better and some other hardened metal components and stuff. So it's meant to be a lot better than what comes out of the BMW factory. So I got that from VAC Motorsports. And so that's all in. 
and buttoned down. All the bolts have been torqued to spec. I've still got the locking pin in securing the flywheel, so I'll pull that out, give the crankshaft a turnover twice, and we'll make sure that it's still in time. Fingers crossed, eh? And we'll get started on this. <laughs> I'm a little bit uncertain how to proceed from here because as I said I rotated the crank just to double check the timing and the first time I did it I went to put the camshaft locking plates in place and on the exhaust cam the locking plate was sitting up about one maybe two millimeters and on the inlet side it was sitting flat. I removed the locking pin in the flywheel, moved the um, crank a little bit and the exhaust cam side sat flat and then I was able to get the locking pin into the flywheel so so this locking plate here is what I'm referring to and at the moment it is, it's sitting perfectly flat against the cylinder head here and here so this is the inlet side and this is the exhaust side so it's sitting flat but I had to manipulate it a bit to get it to sit flat before I put the locking pin in as I say, the first time I did it, that wasn't sitting really flat on the exhaust side and it took a bit of manipulation to do it. So I don't know if there's a worn component in the um, timing gear, which has got a bit of play in it, which is causing that to happen. But certainly everything's locked in place at top dead center, so it should be right. Um, and I'm just a little bit concerned. All the timing components seem to be in really good condition there was no signs of wear or rubbing or anything like that the only thing that i can think of is perhaps the timing chain tensioner has got a bit of play in it because that's one component that i haven't replaced and it's got a spring in it and it works off oil pressure so it's got an oil feed holes in it and maybe because there's no oil pressure it's causing a little bit of slack in the timing chain and that's what's causing it so I think I'll button everything up because certainly everything's locked at top, top dead center and everything's lined up at the moment and then we'll play it by ear as we do a startup and hopefully I don't put a valve through the top of a piston that's my only concern before I do that got a heap of mess over there I need to get cleaned up. So I've just got a bit of clean up done around the garage because had tools everywhere and things like that and before I seal things up I like to make sure I get all my tools put away so that I know for sure that I haven't left a socket or something like that inside the head before I put the valve cover on. So I've got a new gasket, a heap of these new little o-rings to replace. New spark plugs which came with my supercharger kit so these are a um, like a high temp spark plug from NGK. I got a new set of coils. Not that I think particularly the other ones I had a problem with. They've done a few miles and I don't know how old they are so some of the, the washers um, go on the valve cover. I'm going to clean those up before I put them back on. You know, the little securing nuts and what have you so I'm going to get all those sort of cleaned up. So I've just finished over at the buffing wheel and I've been cleaning up the uh, little, I guess they're little bolts and, and washers to go onto the uh, valve cover and I'm going to just give these a quick lick of paint. They should look really good against the black of the valve cover. So I'm doing some prep work in terms of getting the valve cover on and obviously one of the things you've got to do is remove any residue from the old gasket. Now I'm pretty fortunate because the gasket that I had in has only done about 20,000 Ks and when I ordered the new Vanos or the replacement upgraded Vanos, thought it was worthwhile just getting a new valve cover gasket 
to put in anyway. Wasn't a lot of clean up, but what you need to remember is because it's an alloy head, you can't use a you know your traditional metal scraper because you can risk putting gouges and things like that. So what I'd suggest to do is shop around and try and get yourself a set of plastic scrapers. So these are really good also for when you're doing the um, replacing the gasket on the oil pan as well because it's an aluminium block you can't use a metal scraper on it as well so with so much um, aluminium in your m54 engine these plastic scrapers are really good there's a couple areas when you're putting the new valve cover gasket in that you need to use rtv for getting that out i found the best thing was some brake cleaner and a green scotch bright just to do a final clean up around the cylinder head before the new gasket comes on. So I've just got a couple little areas I need to touch up before I put the new gasket on. When I installed the Vanos, you also use some gray RTV sealant around the top of the uh, Vanos gasket where it mates up to the head. So I've got a little bit of residue there I wanna clean up just to make sure I get a good seal and give everything a bit of a wipe down with the Scotch-Brite and the brake cleaner just to be 100% sure it's all clean before I put the new gasket on. Okay, so I'm ready now to install the new gasket into the valve cover and there's a couple of different components. There's a dozen little rubber O-rings gasket things and there's a couple of gaskets that go over where the spark plugs and then there's the big square one that goes right around the perimeter of it and before I put that onto the head there's a couple areas which I'll show you which need some RTV gasket sealer because the rubber gaskets don't generally seal really well around corners and things there's a couple of sections around the Vanos where you got two metal areas that sort of seal together and you just need a bit of RTV there to help it along. Okay, so I got that in. I'm just going to move the camera around and I'll get the RTV applied into those corners ready to slide this in. The RTV takes about an hour to set and because I'm not firing this up straight away I'm not too concerned about it. It's going to have plenty of time to set before I do my first fire up anyway. And that should be it. So I've got the valve cover back on, everything in place, and it's looking really good, except I found this on the rack when I was going over to grab the coils. Uh, and this is a plastic cover that goes over the inlet cam. And of course, it needs to be under the valve cover. I don't know how important it is. I think what it does is stops oil from splashing around too much around the oil filler cap and so I'm gonna to have to take the valve cover back off to put this back in but I'm gonna do that tomorrow because what I'll do is I'll go down to the parts shop and get some more RTV sealant because the one I've got stuffed and I it was a pain in the ass to get out of the tube so I'll grab some more of that and I'll set it set this aside as a project for first thing in the morning. I mean, fortunately, it's a really easy job given the stage I'm at. It should only take me 15 minutes to put on. I am a little bit concerned though that uh, with the new cams that it might rub on the, the bottom there. So what I'll do is I'll put it in, manually turn the crank a couple of times and just make sure it's not touching anything. Yeah, yeah. So. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is get that bracket off the air, condi uh, the air conditioning compressor so I can start getting that cleaned up and then I can pretty much get it sort of bolted on 
and I think that's pretty much everything on this side of the engine and then everything else is on the right hand side so yeah I thought it was going too well <laughs> anyway that's what happens you know you get a bit cocky and yeah so I'll put that there so I know where it is and I won't forget about it again and uh, I've got to go up the shop shortly anyway get some more coke for a bourbon later on tonight and uh, yeah I'll grab some RTV and I should be ready to go for tomorrow <laughs>